This is our third and final section of the numbering systems uh, lecture on hexadecimal numbers. We'll get into these. Um, you should have already watched the binary and the octal numbers and the hexadecimal numbers. Should have, you should also have read through the, the lecture material for those. So hexadecimal numbers is a base 16 numbering system which means there's actually 16 different digits represented, 0 through F. And there's no way for us to represent besides with letters anything above 9 so they use letters. And this actually represents four binary bits of information. Remember octal represented three because it was zero to seven. This one is four bits because it's zero to fifteen, and fifteen is one 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 one, which is four binary bits. There's the actual count if you want to look at it. This again was in the lecture notes. So we're going to talk about hexadecimal to decimal, decimal to hexadecimal binary to hexadecimal and hexadecimal to binary. The good thing is the, the methods are exactly the same as what we've done before. It's just the numbering system has changed and you have to deal with that A through F thing. So let's convert this number over the 2EA. So we need to create a chart again. Anytime you go from a numbering system to decimal you always want to create a chart. Our chart is based on the base that we're going from to the power of zero 16 to the power of 1, 2, 3 to the 4th. And remember this is always 1 and then 16 to the 1st is 16, 16 to the 2nd is 256, 4096, and 65,536. So you can see we can represent pretty big numbers with a very small amount of, of numbers. And also the multiplying at times the base still holds true. Start with the 1 1 times 16 is 16, 16 times 16 is 256, 256 times 16 is 4096, and 4096 times 16 is 65,636. So uh, multiplying at times the base still holds true. Now what we need to do is take this 2EA and put it underneath these numbers. Now 2EA by itself, that eh, sounds pretty easy, but what's an E? So we need to figure out what an E is. The best thing to do is go ahead and write it down and you got to remember that 9 is 9, and then it goes A, B, C, D, E, and F. So A would be 10, B is an 11, C is 12, so on and so on. So what I would do is just write down the number that it represents right underneath of it. That way you kind of know what to multiply. Then you're not thinking 16 times E, you're thinking 16 times 14. And that's a little easier to, to deal with. So then multiply it through 2 times 256, 16 times 14, and 1 times 10. And then multiply it, add them together. Try another one together. Let's do CAD, C A D. Let's convert that to a number. Again, put it in a chart. So we got 116, 256, on and on. Put C A D underneath, and C is a 12, A is a 10, D is a 13. Multiply those, and then add them together. And Sorry about this, but it's 3,072 is what it should be. And then it's 160 and then 13. So you add those up and you get 3,245. So try to convert some of these on your own. Remember, B is an 11, F is 15. So uh, just convert those over and uh, see how you do and then come back for the answers. Now there's the answers, what you should have gotten. And you can pause it and check them or, or you can go into the, just let it play and keep, we'll go into the next section. Um, we're going to go to decimal to hexadecimal. And again, for these, anytime you go decimal to hexadecimal, uh, successive division is probably the easiest way to go uh, for these. So that sum of weights method. And so since this is base 16, we're going to take that number 476, which is the number we're going to convert and we're going to divide by 16's. So if you divide 476 divided by 16 you actually end up getting 29.75. Well you take the 29 again and put it down here and the 0.75 is going to be for your remainder. So 0.75 times 16 gives you a 12. Well we don't keep it as a 12. We have to convert that back over to its letter equivalent. So a 12 is actually equal to C 
in hexadecimal. So it's not a 12 anymore, it's a C. Bring the 29 down, divided by 16 equals 1.8125. So take that 0.8125 times 16, you get a remainder of 13, which is really a D. And always make sure you convert it over to the D, or you'll really throw your number off. Take your 1 down, 1 divided by 16 is, well, it's just a remainder of 1, but go ahead and do the method 0 0.0625 times 16 gives you 1. Make the building collapse. This is your least significant. This is your most significant. Make the building fall to the right, so you're left with 1DC. That's your hexadecimal equivalent to the decimal number 476. Again, here's some more practice for you. Try these out, see how you do, and, um, and come back and see the answers. Okay, here's the answers. And if you didn't get one of those answers, go back and rework it. It may be just something simple you, you messed up, maybe you didn't carry or didn't multiply the decimal right. Just rework it real quick, and, and if you have problems, just email me. The okay, next thing we're going to do is convert from binary to hexadecimal. It's going to work just like we did for the octal. Instead of groups of three, we're going to do groups of four. So if we have this binary number, and again, I'm going to write it down here where I can kind of work with it a little bit. And I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to break it up into groups of four. So there's four, put a line. There's four, put a line and there's four and if I had less than four I would have just added a zero to the end of it that's fine and then for this one I'm going to put a chart over top of it one two four and this one goes up to eight because there's four of them one two four eight one two four eight and then we're going to add up the ones that have ones underneath so eight plus four is twelve and we'll um, convert that over to the actual hex equivalent which is C and then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, which is E. And then 8 plus 1 is 9, which is just 9. So we've got CE9 equals this binary number right here. So again, just like octal, uh, the biggest thing here is groups of 4, and you have to convert that number over to the letter equivalent. You can't just leave it as a number because um, it's to throw your numbers way off. All right, try these out. See how you do. And there's the answers for it. Again, I, I gave you uh, kind of split up the, the numbers there just so you can kind of see how I split them up, and then there's the actual answers. So check your answers. See how you did. Now our last section is going to be doing hexadecimal to binary, where we're kind of going the other direction. So again, represent that hexadecimal number as a binary number. We're going to group in groups of, of four. Write down D2, F, 9. And then for D and F, you know F is 15 and D is 13. And we're going to do little charts underneath there. 1, 2, 4, 8. 1, 2, 4, 8. 1, 2, 4, and 8. And 1, 2, 4, and 8. All right, and we need to figure out what here adds up to equal 13. So we've got 8, 12, and 1 is 13. To get a 2, we're going to do 0, 0, 1, 0. And F is 15, so we've got 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And then 9 is going to be 8 plus 1, so it's 1, 0, 0, 1. And that's our binary equivalent for the hex number D2F9. So practice these.
pause it and we'll come back and show you the answers. There's the answers and again the leading zeros I add these just because you should keep all your zeros that way it keeps it as a nice even groups of four. It's not really required necessarily but it's good to keep them in the same groupings sizes as every, all the rest of them. Keep zeros in that case. And this is actually the last video of the three. This concludes the numbering systems section of the lecture. And if you have any problems, email me. I'll try to get back with you.